Hallelujah. He is your friend. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. Hallelujah. Jeremy's going to come and, and preach to us this morning and speak to us. Amen. Do you love the word of the Lord this morning? The word of the Lord is the mightiest thing there is. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you give that hand to the Lord this morning? Come on, give it to him like he's in this place. Is that how you would clap for him if Jesus were to walk in down these aisles today? Amen. You ought to give him praise. He's worthy today. Amen. To be lifted up. God is so good to us. Amen. How many of you feel the presence of the Lord in this place this morning? Amen. I feel the presence of the Lord. He is so good. God is good. God is good. Amen. Such a wonderful atmosphere this morning of praise and worship and giving to the Lord. And what a wonderful, beautiful season it is that we celebrate Jesus. Is there a more beautiful name in this whole world than the name of Jesus? The Bible said at the name of Jesus, demons have to flee. I'm glad five of you know it this morning. At the name of Jesus, demons have to flee. At the name of Jesus, cancer has to go. At the name of Jesus, depression and oppression has to loose itself and you can be free by the power that's in that name. How many of you ever been in trouble before and all you could say was Jesus? Maybe you were heading for a car or a car was heading for you and all you could say was Jesus. You didn't have time for a long prayer, but all you could say was, come on, all you could say was, and all of a sudden something just happened. Something just took place. I don't know how it is, but I know this morning that when I speak the name of Jesus, there is power that is invoked when I will speak the name of Jesus. Amen. He is good today. If I get a little bit of monitor up here, I kind of died out here. Amen. The Lord's good to us, and we appreciate the blessings of the Lord so much, and He is good. I turn you this morning to the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11. I want to draw you this morning to the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11. Amen. The Bible said, Now faith. Can somebody say, now faith? Can somebody say, now faith? How many of you understand this morning that it is easy for us to believe God to do something for us that has already passed that we have already seen the evidence of? When we have already gone through the battle and God has delivered us, it's easy to have faith on things that have already happened. Perhaps it's easy to have faith this morning on things that are to come because we have no idea of what the future is going to bring to us. So it's not hard to have faith of things that have passed and maybe not as difficult to have faith on things that are going to come. But how many of us can have now faith in the present circumstance that we are involved in right now? The Bible said that now faith is... Amen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You know, it's easy to have faith to believe you've got the money to pay your bill when you got the money in your pocket. Amen. It's easy to have faith to believe that God's a healer when you go to the doctor and he said there's nothing wrong with you and gives you a clean bill of health. It's easy to find faith in, in the confidence of knowing that everything's all right. But now faith is the substance of things that I have hoped for. The Bible said faith is speaking those things that are not as if they were or as if they are. Speaking to those things that are not. You say to yourself, I don't have the faith to believe maybe that God is going to do everything that I would desire for him to do in my life. Well, faith is reaching out and taking a hold of those things and saying to yourself, I'm going to speak those things that are not as though they are until they come to pass and until they come to fruition. I'm going to speak those things that are not as if though they had already happened. Amen. You can't wait for God to heal you and then have faith to believe that God's a healer. You've got to, in the midst of the battle, in the midst of the sickness, in the midst of the disease, 
there has to be a faith that rises up on the inside of you that says, I know that God is a healer. Well, there's always going to be somebody there to tell you, well, God hasn't healed you yet. How many of you know it's not hard to find negative people this morning? It's not hard to find people to tell you that everything in your life is going to go wrong and everything's falling apart. How many of you know Job's comforters are on every corner? You've got them in your family. You've got them on your Facebook connection. You've got them on your friends list. You've got them in your cell phone. People that are always there to tell you that you can't do it and you can't make it. And everything looks bad and everything looks bleak. And it seems like the situation will never get any better. But now faith is the substance of things that I have hoped for. Even though I have not seen them. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to put my faith in God that God is able to do for me what I cannot do for myself. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. How many of you know this morning that God works in times and seasons? Ecclesiastes 3, 1 tells us, for every time, for everything, there is a season and a time and every purpose under the heaven. I don't believe that God is just a God of the past or that God is just a God in the future. But I believe that God is an ever-present help right now, today, and this time, and this season. God is an ever-present help to them that will call upon Him and believe in Him. And so, so we, have to, we have to learn what faith is all about. I sometimes say faith is this. Faith is when you step out on nothing, but you land on something. There's nothing there that's going to give you any security. There's nothing ahead of you that seems to be able to give you what you need. But faith says, I'm going to reach out with the fingertips of faith. And I'm going to take a hold of God. And I'm going to believe God. And God's going to see me through. You see, sometimes it's easy to trust God when you got a bank account full of money. It's easy to trust God when everything's going good. But what are you going to do when you find yourself like Job? And Job... Job loses everything he has. And Job said, though God slay me, yet will I trust in him. My faith and my confidence is in God. You see, Job had everything. He had riches. He had homes. He had family. He had a wife. He had gold. He had silver. He had animals and cattle and crops and everything to his disposal. But the Bible said that, that the devil came and he said, would you let down the hedge on Job? And God said, you can do anything to Job that you want to do except take his life. And the devil came in and took everything that Job had. Oh, but what a testimony of faith this morning it must have been when Job said this, naked I came to the world and naked I'm going to leave. I came here with nothing and I'm leaving with nothing. But there's one thing I'm going to have. I'm going to bless the name of my God if he heals or if he don't my faith is in the Lord so it's easy this morning for us to find faith when everything is going good in our lives when everything falls into place instead of everything falling apart it's easy to find faith but you must understand this morning that there are times in your life that it seems like that everything is falling apart. But it is that time that God is causing everything to fall together. I must tell you this morning that when you start in a relationship with God and you start walking with God and you start living for God and you let God begin to guide you and lead you, you haven't seen trouble like you're going to see. You haven't seen situations that's going to rise in your life like they have. You say, well, the devil don't bother me. That's probably because he's already got you. You say, the devil doesn't affect me. That's because he's probably already got you. You say, has he got me sitting in a church seat? I want to tell you, sitting in a church seat don't make you a Christian any more than sitting in a garage makes you a car. You've got to make a decision that my faith and my trust and my confidence and my hope is not in anything that is in this world because everything that's in this world is temporary but my faith will take me not only through this life but it will lead me into the life to come and I can live in eternity with God so it's easy this morning to have faith there was a woman in the book of Mark chapter number 5 
The woman has no name. The Bible just calls her a certain woman. Maybe one of the most taught about, preached about women that was ever in the Bible that doesn't even have a name. I thought to myself about this. I have a name. God knows my name. He knows, the Bible said, not, not just the hair on my head, but every one of them is numbered. He knows every breath that I take. He knows every step that I take. He knows every thought that goes through my mind. He knows the heartbeat of everything that's happening on the inside of me. Listen, we can hide a lot of things and we can put a lot of things and recess them down inside of ourselves, but God knows everything about us. Uh, you don't hide it. You can't clam it up. You can't put it deep inside in you enough that God doesn't know. He knows every thought. He knows every intent. Uh, he knows every spirit. He knows every word. He knows every breath. He knows every step. There is nothing that will bypass the eyes and the attention of God. He knows everything. See, we can come to church and clap when we're told to clap and be as lost as last year's Easter eggs. You say, I don't understand that kind of talk. Just plain talk, but it's true. Faith, what is it? Where do I find him? The Bible said a certain woman on a certain day at a certain time. She got tired of living in the same situation. Can I tell you today, you'll never change what you accept. Well, y'all sitting quiet this morning. It's either really good or really bad. I'm not sure which one. But I'm telling you this morning, you will never change what you accept and what you continue and what you continue to keep in your life. God will never take anything from you that you're not willing to give up. You've got to get in a position and a place that says, I'm tired of being tired and I'm sick of being sick. And if you haven't got to that place yet this morning, you're not going to find anything from God. But when you come to the place that you're tired of the sickness of sin and you're tired of the problems and the situations that Satan has put upon you you can change that situation by somehow in some way determining in your mind if I can just get to Jesus everything will be alright you see unfortunately for us and the difference in this woman is she was able to physically go to Jesus and the problem that we're having today is the church is the ushering in power that ushers in the presence of God and the fact is is most of the time we have a hard time creating an atmosphere that is conducive for Jesus to work in because we want to be politically correct we want it to sound good and we want it to feel good and we want to feel uh, some kind of spirit that makes us think everything is all right and as long as we do enough good and enough deeds and enough this and enough that that somehow we're going to be safe I want to tell you this morning apart from the shed blood of Jesus Christ and repenting of your sins and giving your life to God being baptized in the precious wonderful name of Jesus Christ there is no salvation in any other name that's not my imagination Imagination. That's what the Bible says. A lot of people don't like that because it don't fit into the creed and the dogma and the doctrine that they've been taught, but there's no other name, there's no other way. This little woman in a situation, the Bible said for 12 years. How many of you ever been in a situation this morning that you're sitting in and you're thinking, is it ever going to end? Anybody this morning, problems arise and you think to yourself, is it ever going to come to an end? And the Bible said this woman for 12 years had, had this bloody issue and spent every dime that she had. She had nothing else left, nothing else to give. And the Bible said she gave it to every doctor she could find. And she kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And there was no remedy for her. But this day she determined in her mind, if somehow I can make it to where Jesus is, can I tell you this morning that whatever your problem is, if somehow you can get to where Jesus is, there is a remedy. You say it's sickness, God is a healer. You say I don't have enough, God is a provider. You say everything is falling apart, God is a peacemaker. If we can just get to where Jesus is, he can make everything okay in our lives. The Bible said when she had heard in verse 27 that Jesus was coming, 
she came in the press behind him. Now, I could stand up here and tell you that serving God's easy and there's never going to be any trials. There's never going to be no situations and troubles that's going to arise in your life. But I want to tell you this morning, anything you get from God, you're going to have to press for it. Some little milk toast prayer, lay it now, lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. That's not a prayer. I'm talking about when the deep cries out to the deep and there is a wheel that begins to turn in the middle of the wheel. And not only do you take attention of God, but God stops where he is uh, and looks over the battlements of heaven and says, uh, there is a man or there is a woman that is getting a hold of God, that is taking a hold of the horns of the altar. I ask you this morning, when was the last time that God stopped in the tracks of heaven and said so and so is praying and they have touched me because I felt the spirit leave my body when was the last time I can say to you this morning it's been longer than I wanted it to be when was the last time that you felt the presence of God stop everything that it was doing and take attention to what you were praying about you see, we all jump on the scripture that we can move mountains if we can have faith and we can do this and we can do that. I want to tell you this morning, without faith and trust in God, you can't do anything. So she comes behind him. The Bible said she could not get to where he was, so she just reached out and she touched his clothes and she said to herself, if I may but touch his clothes I might be whole if I can but touch his clothes there's a chance that I might be healed can I tell you what this woman did this day she spoke those things that were not as though they already were and she said if I can but touch just his clothes I shall be whole I shall be whole but she wasn't whole yet but she spoke those things that were not as though they were and with the principle of faith she reached out and took a hold of what was not real yet and drew it back to herself and caused it to become reality Did you know the power of positive thinking and power of positive speaking in sickness can, can, can turn a sickness around by just speaking to it? There's life and death in the power of the tongue and this woman spoke her healing over herself before she ever saw the evidence of it. She was already speaking about it. If I can but touch him, I know I shall be made whole. Verse 29, and straightway the fountain of her blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed from that plague. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned and said, who touched my clothes? Can I ask you this morning during the course of this service, has God looked down upon us and said these words over any of our compelling worship? Who touched me? Is there anybody in here this morning that can say, I've gotten a hold of God so desperately this morning that God is looking down and saying, I know who it was that touched me I, because I sense they're, they're desperate. See, the Bible said he asked his disciples who touched me. And they said, there's multitudes of people that are thronging thee. And Jesus said, no, but somebody has touched me in a different way. Somebody has touched me with the fingertips of faith. Somebody has reached past their situation. Somebody has reached past the trial and the circumstance and the situation that's in their life and they have touched me with 
faith. You see, faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. What is it? When was the last time you were touched by the presence of the Lord in such a mighty way that you felt the release not only of your problem, but you felt the release from heaven and you felt the Spirit of the Lord flow into your situation? You can make it look good. You can dress it up. You can put makeup on your face and jewels around your neck and come to the house of God and, and lift your hands and go through the motions and be powerless on the inside. Not one ounce of spirit and not one ounce of power. You say, how do you know? Because I know because I've been there just like you have. What is it this morning? that I'm willing to do? Am I willing? Am I willing to get ugly for God? Am I willing to get down and press through? How many of you remember years ago when people would pray, they would say, you got to press! Now we come, oh God, and wonder why we leave just like we came. Because nobody's willing to press. It's a joke. You tell people they've got to do something, they'll leave you and go to the church down the street where it's easier. But the fact is, we still have to press our way in. It's a press. I wonder this morning, I wonder this morning, have we done our best for Jesus? You see, that's a question that you can, you can avoid, you can put out of your mind, and you can, act, you can act like I didn't ask that question. But the question still remains, have I done my best for Jesus? Have I done my best for him you see I don't understand how we can be sold out for God now I know this in politically correct and I may not get a chance to preach again but today I've got the microphone I don't see how we can say we're sold out for God and come to church one time a month I don't see how we can say we're sold out for God and never a worship, ne never nothing come from our mouth, never lift our hands, never worship, never give God anything, nothing, absolutely nothing, just come setting, taking up space, going through the motions, waiting for someone else to bear the load. I ask you this morning, If you want something from God, are you willing to press your way through? Are you so tired of the situation or the circumstance that's in your life that you're willing to press? Or are you more comfortable where you are? Because God will not bother those that don't want to be bothered. As we stand this morning, See, it's a press. It's not easy. It's not easy. When was the last time? And the reason I'm asking this is because I've had to ask this to myself and answered this to myself. When was the last time you got down and grabbed the horns of the altar and you hold there and you stayed there and you prayed until like Smith Wigglesworth said, either I'm going to move God or He's going to move me, but one of us is going to give. 
When was the last time you took a hold of God like Jacob and said, I won't turn you loose until you bless me. You see, it's not a milk toast relationship with God. It's something that's real. The Bible said it's not a fearful to fall into some hands that can destroy your body, but the one that destroys your body and soul, you better take account of because every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now is the time. Are you here this morning? You're tired of your situation? I don't know probably any situation that goes on in most people's lives in here. But I guarantee you there's some in here this morning. I guarantee you there's somebody here this morning that's grinning from ear to ear and inside they're as depressed as they can be. Giving the world a smile but oppressed by satanic powers. There's people in here this morning that are standing next to your spouse and it looks like everything's going good but everything's falling apart and you know it is. But as long as it looks good, who cares what it looks like? If it's not right and it's not real, what's it matter? Are you here this morning? Do you feel compelled? And I wanna press in. I, I've gotta have a touch of God this morning. I can't leave like I came in. I'm desperate, I'm desperate. I'm gonna press my way through. Are you here this morning? Or are you satisfied where you are? I can't make you come. I can't make you bow a knee. All I can tell you is this. If you can but touch the hem of his garment, whatever you bring to him, God will touch it this morning.